very good morning to you. Thank you for keeping us company here at Y254 TV. In case you're just getting to join us, this is Y in the Morning hashtag Thursday Vibes, where we get to give you good music, good conversations, <laughs> and of course, we get to do the spot on tech, which is coming up right away. And this week's episode, in this week's episode of um, Spot on Tech, we get we get to feature Crestwave Limited, which is an innovation-driven company that undertakes software development project. And with me in studio are the directors Felix Oredo Jem and Maxwell Gakombegidinji. Let the conversation run. Karibuni sana. Thank you for making time, probably because I have already highlighted your names <laughs> <laughs> and someone might be wondering who's Maxwell, who's Felix, you can probably do an introduction. Uh, true. I'm Felix Oriedo. I am one of the directors of Crestwave Limited and also a co-founder. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Maxwell Gakombe Gedenji and uh, I'm also a co-founder and director at Crestwave Limited and I'm also a software engineer by profession. Okay, nice. So I think we start from what's Chris Wave? Of course, I have, I have read a shortened version of a description of Chris Wave. Probably you could give us an in-depth description of what Chris Wave does. Okay, yeah. maybe I can uh, start uh, from where we started. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Felix, my colleague here, is, uh, was a, 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 a campus mate. We studied together at Moy University. And uh, back then, uh, we used to do some projects, small, small projects at uh, high school for purposes of studying. Then we realized, oh, we can do something. We started by doing some competitions like the Pivot East for developments. For development. We participated in Pivot East. Then we got to a, run, a second runners up. We participated in uh, Safari Com We Which position did we emerge? I think we were in our category we were number three. We were in the category of uh, business applications where we had developed an application called Maiduka. Yeah. Yeah, then uh, we did another one, uh, the final one, uh, which was called Kulima, uh, which was, uh, became number one in the Orange Developer Challenge. And then we sat down. After now, we won that one. And uh, we thought, why can't we make this thing to be something of the future? instead of not just doing projects, doing one project, then moving on to another one. So we sat down uh, back in campus and decided, oh, we can come up with something. And then we started by now doing our, our first project together as a, a commercial project, which was called uh, eParent. And uh, by then we had not incorporated the company. So we started by doing that eParent. Then we started pushing it to the market. No, we realized, no, it's not working. So we decided now, uh, let's look, let's, let, let's, uh, let's go and do a market research, which is the gap in the market in terms of software. So that's how we sat down, uh, did an evaluation, we checked into the financial sector. That one is very, was highly digitized by then. That is back in 2016. Eh? So uh, we checked into the healthcare sector, then we realized, oh, there is a gap there. Then uh, we decided to incorporate uh, the company Crestwave Limited, now from that small uh, startup that we had, which was not official, and then that's how Crestwave came into being. That is in 2017, we incorporated it in November, and now we started doing uh, healthcare solutions from then up to now. What are some of the projects you've done? Uh, there's the one which you started with, the one called the parent. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, okay, as you enter into the field, okay, I think I can also capture something before I go into mm -hmm. the project. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, okay, still we were still uh, sort of employed, mm -hmm. but uh, there's this uh, great man, we met Dr. Gakombe, uh, who is uh, the CEO of Metropolitan Hospital. So he was also our mentor at that time, and he advised us that, uh, okay, you have to choose one path. If you go with two, one of them will fail. So, uh, as we were, okay, because initially we were doing a parent, we now uh, started interacting more in the healthcare sector. So uh, one of our core projects is now that eCare HMIS, which is a healthcare system for clinics and hospitals. And uh, on top of that eCare HMIS, we have built some other modules on top of it, like uh, there's a food ordering app uh, for patients, 
yeah but uh, largely it's mostly on the healthcare system healthcare yeah, sector also we have an app for patients such so that patients are able to let's say view their results at home after you have gone to the hospital pay your bills from the comfort of your phone instead of having to go to the cashier and stuff yeah so largely it's uh, everything you have done is, sur is surrounding the healthcare sector yeah with our core product being the EKHMIS before we talk about EK, of course, which was uh, showcasing uh, before we started the interview, is there a particular reason why you chose healthcare, healthcare to be like? Is there a particular reason? Yeah, maybe uh, I can start. As Felix has said, uh, as we were doing the research, there was uh, Dr. Gakombe, who has also been our mentor up to now. And uh, while we were doing the research, we identified that uh, healthcare was uh, like 20% uh, digitized as compared to the financial sector, which uh, is, is very highly digitized. If you go to banks, they're very highly digital. And uh, so we, we, we identified that uh, there is a gap in the healthcare sector. And, uh, and that gap was uh, affecting the provision of healthcare to uh, quality healthcare to the, to the, to, to the people. So we, th one of the reasons that we chose healthcare, it was to minimize that gap. Number two, we had a mentor who is into who has been in the healthcare sector for 25 years, so he could be able to tell us this is the way to go. Uh, this is these are the gaps to address, which now we have we have been addressing using our solutions. So, and uh, through that we have been able to identify those gaps, close them through an ecosystem of applications that Felix uh, was just mentioning. So our key thing for going to into healthcare is to address the big gap that was there. Someone might have walked in on eCare, you know, or they're just getting to tune into the conversation. Uh, would you mind taking us through what is eCare? What does it do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so eCare, uh, yeah, maybe then uh, even from the name, uh, it's a, it's a, an e-health system. So eCare is a hospital management information system, uh, and other people call them EMRs. But uh, because for us it covers all aspects of a hospital, from uh, management of a hospital, from entry, uh, from patient management, to hospital operations in terms of uh, purchases, it manages all aspects of a hospital. So maybe to start is, uh, I can start by saying the patient management, that is a key focus, that was a first key focus. So patient management, it means once you get into a hospital, uh, all your records are captured through the system. So from the reception, you are registered, your bio data is captured, and then you are sent to the nurse, your information is also captured. You are sent to the doctor, the doctor also uses the system to capture your information, to request the lab tests, everything, uh, to go to pharmacy, the drugs, they are done on that, uh, on that software, so that all your records are captured in one central place. So that is the aspect of the patient management. The other aspect is the hospital operations in terms of purchases. If the hospital is buying drugs, then you're able to do the purchases from there and you're able to make the controls that there are no leakages in terms of uh, you don't lose any revenue through uh, shoddy deals, underhand deals, uh, where drugs are stolen from the stores. So you're able to manage from purchasing to dispensing. And you can tell every drug that was purchased, it was issued to this patient you can be able to do an audit of all your drugs. So the same case for other, other items, other, other, other medical items like uh, the, the gloves and everything. You're able to capture and track all the items that you have been able to purchase and have been utilized to serve the patients. So, uh, so that is the other aspect of the, of, the, of the HMIS, of the eCare. The other aspect is uh, of the self-management of the patient themselves which uh, my colleague had mentioned about the patient app. So one of the things we realized is that uh, patients, uh, if you move from one place, if today I'm, uh, I'm treated at, at a certain uh, facility A, if I move to facility B, then my records remain at facility A. So I'm not able to move with my records uh, to the other facility. So uh, that is how we, ca we came up now to, apart from now managing the hospitals, is also the patient to manage their records. So, such that you're able to move with your records from hospital A to hospital B, such that the other doctor does not start treating you from, from zero. They have your records, they know your history. 
So, uh, so that is the other aspect of our e-care, whereby we capture, we keep the patient at the center, whereby they're able to access their records, able to access the hospital facility, able to access also the doctors and also be able to interact with their doctors. Yeah, so the other aspect is about uh, yeah, health institutions, some of them they are business, even, uh, even for the government ones, they, are, they, they also do some aspect of accounting and billing. So we ensure that we have those controls, the patient is able to be billed and the, the management is able to track all aspects of uh, billing, what has been billed, what was issued, and uh, those accounting reports are also available on our system. So I think Felix... Yeah, I think to just to add on what you're saying, uh, one of the core things we realize in a hospital, mm -hmm. most people don't understand that there are also businesses. So EK also enables us to be able to track their, let's say, profit and loss, mm -hmm. their margins and stuff. Uh, also in terms of reporting, we also provide the Ministry of Health reports, which are usually required by hospitals to submit to the government. So EK automatically does that for you. Uh, also in terms of the patient management, there is something which we also do. For people with non-communicable diseases like diabetes, uh, these patients usually require to be monitored remotely. So EK also provides that platform whereby a patient is able to send their vitals through the application and the doctor from wherever he is is able to consult with the patient without the patient having to travel to the clinic or hospital. Uh, yeah, I think largely that's what EK is about. Um, yeah, you had mentioned something about patients moving with their, with their information from one hospital to the other. Uh, this app, can you, is it interchangeable between hospitals? Assuming that I was probably being treated at a local hospital within um, my area, and then now there is need that I be referred to a bigger facility, maybe a referral hospital, a level five, you know. So is it is it my is it my responsibility as a patient or the responsibility of the um, hospital to transfer the information? Or is it just an automatic system that once I log in that I was here, the hospital needs to just send the same information to another hospital? Yeah, okay, thank you for the question. So, uh, okay, the first thing that we are doing is uh, the patient, the data belongs to the patient. So the patient is the one to share the data with the other hospital. They have to authorize for, the, for their data to be accessed by the other facility. So what we have done on our end, we have come up with a portal whereby if you authorize your data to be sent by the other hospital, the other hospital can be able to log into that portal and access your, your data. Then if the doctor is using our app, there is an app we have called MDoc, which if the doctor now, the other doctor is on that platform, if you, if you, if you, if you as a patient you share your data, then the doctor will be able to access your data through that app called MDoc. But generally the patient, because the data belongs to the patient, the patient has to authorize that data to be shared with either the other facility or, or the, the doctor who is uh, seeing that patient. So yes. how many people does it require to run a care? So uh, for it to run, it depends uh, because uh, IKEA is able to run on a very small facility from uh, a consultant clinic up to a, a big hospital, a level five hospital. So uh, the number of users required also depends largely on the type of facility and the size. Mm -hmm. Because all the modules, if for instance uh, it's a facility, a consultant clinic, we only need a reception, usually they ha there is a reception and the consultant. So those are two users. If you go to a level three, you find there is a lab, there is a pharmacy, there is uh, probably a radiology department. So you find mm -hmm. each of those departments has a user. So the number depends on the size, but uh, it can range from one user up to a hundred or even more, depending on the size of the facility. Uh, amongst the features that eCare has, mm -hmm. has, has um, or other advantages that as I was going through the presentation is that eCare reduces cost. How would you define that? How would you explain that? Okay, I think I can start with the basic one, like in terms of being paperless, obviously you are able to reduce costs in terms of no printing and stuff. Then the other major one is uh, sealing of loopholes. 
like especially uh, at the areas like pharmacy, where you find like maybe someone might dispense a drug without maybe payment or something, or uh, yeah, there might some, be some fraud related there. And also, we have some controls whereby before, let's say, someone goes to purchase something, they create a purchase order, which has to be approved by management. So you find in those kind of areas, we see some loopholes. Also, we have done some, some integrations to M-Pesa and also banks, such that payments are automatic. Like we find in some hospitals, they are completely cashless. So that completely eliminates the cases of fraud and, uh, yeah, and those kinds of stuff. Mm, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, well yeah, and maybe to top on that, okay, mm -hmm. how the cost now drills down back to the patient mm -hmm. is uh, if our key focus is to ensure that there is a seamless flow of things within a hospital. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the turnaround time for a patient mm -hmm. initially was, uh, was one hour, then we're able to reduce it maybe to 30 minutes. What that means, the, pa the, the, the one, the, we, the patient is able to be seen a very short period of time. The hospital is able to see more patient. The doctor is able to see more patient than 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 than, than, uh, than, than before, because uh, early uh, early on you'd find that uh, you have to go with a paper every at every point. You go to lab, you are written a paper. You go to pharmacy, you are written another paper. So. Once now we're able to streamline that process, what it means, the, the hospital can be able now to have, to, to serve more patients and they can be able to reduce the cost in terms of the cost of offering that care. Because if, if for instance, they have to, they're able to see 100 patients in a day and uh, initially they're able to see 50 or 80, then it means they can be able to reduce the cost for the patient because they're able to, able to see more and uh, able, uh, they're able to see more patients and that, that now they can be able to charge less. Even like the consultation fees, you find that they're able now to reduce because the turnaround time is less and also the number of staff required to move the patients, it's also limited. So that cost can be passed now back to the patient. The other thing, as Felix has mentioned, is the controls. You find in most places that uh, we have installed our system, you find that uh, patients were losing, uh, the hospitals were losing drugs. So the, the cost of operations becomes very high, meaning they have to pass that cost back to, to the patient. So now uh, once we are able to streamline that, then that cost is now able to be passed back to the, to the patient. I think just yeah. to add on it, something mm -hmm. I'd forgotten. Also on the patient side, like the diabetes app I was telling you about, the remote monitoring. We're reducing the cost for patients here in that aspect that they don't have now to travel to and forth. Just with the app and internet, they are able to be monitored. And also, the same also has telemedicine. So a doctor is able to teleconsult patients uh, of any other type of illnesses in a short time, let's say 20 minutes, even at home on their free time. Yeah. So it's, this is a method you have tried and tested. Yes. yes. And of course, uh, during the inception of an idea, not, mo not so many people um, believe in an idea. How difficult was it to sell the idea to the first client you had? Yeah, I think maybe I can uh, start with a bit of some history, uh, mm -hmm. a bit of it. Uh, so once we, as my, cl uh, my colleague has just mentioned about, we, our mentor told us that we have to choose one, either employment because we're in employment, mm -hmm. Or because we initially we were working like working on it and then part time working on the project, mm -hmm. so we had to make the decision that we have to to leave our jobs to work on this full time. And uh, once we left our our employment, our first client was a was a dentist who was a, who is called a Dr. Morioki, and uh, he comes from our village. So it was like. Uh, it was it was basically a referral uh, to somebody you know, so that was the first client, and uh, he gave us we I need my clinic to be open, my dental clinic to be working like this, so that is the first project that we did into healthcare. Uh, so we we landed somehow into into direct into a project, so now after now doing that project for him, then from there he was able to refer us to some other clients 
and uh, it was very easy to convince because uh, for, for them once you could be able to go, go to his clinic is called River Dental Clinic. So go to River Dental Clinic and you can be able to see our system there. So, uh, so from there we have been able to convince people like this is the way it is and then it has been now designed by like the dental one designed by a dentist for dentists. So if you go to this other, the other IKEA, our mentor has been to healthcare for 25 years uh, experience. So he's able to tell us this can work, this cannot work. So essentially that is what has been, uh, uh, we have been using referrals have been, has been the major convincing factor to our clients. So they, they buy the idea because one, it is, they can be able to see it is in use. Number two, it is highly innovative. It has other, it's an ecosystem, yeah, compared to whatever is available. We are an ecosystem. We have the patient app, we have other add-ons. So it is easier to convince uh, the clients to buy our idea as compared to, uh, to something that, 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 that is not visible to them. So I think uh, in terms of... Um, how we got it, it's that first client was our major breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, how effective has this been over the other methods that have been there longer in the market? Uh, I think in terms of referral, you can say like, uh, okay, that's like 80% success rate. Because uh, one, you find, uh, okay, doctors are also very smart people. So that uh, when they go to a clinic, they, they themselves, they observe what is being used there. Mm. They see, they see the reports, like maybe the receipt and stuff, invoice. So it's quite effective compared to even the online marketing and do to do. So I can say referral first. Then uh, pay is also cost effective because you see we are not exactly spending. You just uh, someone referring. Uh, this is a good system. You can see it gives me this. Yeah, mm. and also like for the app, you was talking about the M Doc where doctors are able to even share with other doctors. You can see my revenues. So the app is self-selling itself. Oh. Mm. Yeah. How viable is this software to handle future eventualities? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can expound more on the future eventualities. Um, yeah. Like assuming, you know, technology keeps ah, advancing. Yeah, true, true, you true. know, true. more things will keep, will keep coming up. True. Is, 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 a, is a project or rather is a software yeah. How viable is it to future ah, changes? True, true, true. Actually, uh, we adapt daily. Like, uh, I remember like when we started, like the technologies we are using right now, uh, we have really adapted from where, where we started. Even right now, this part of the project where we are doing an AI health, and uh, okay, something which I can mention, it's called uh, Ozima Health. So uh, during the COVID time period, we did sort of an AI project that is able to detect this someone is suffering, let's say, from COVID based on their symptoms. And on that project, uh, we won the Africa versus Virus Challenge, which was uh, uh, an African competition. So uh, we are constantly evolving. And so like right now in the AI, mm. that's what uh, is something that we are developing slowly by slowly and testing. So yeah, technology-wise, uh, we are constantly evolving. Unless, um, Axel. Yeah, I, I think you have uh, answered it well. And uh, yeah, so for us, it's all about, uh, yeah, we are agile mm. because uh, even as part of our, our, we keep on learning in day to day from doctors, from the clients. So mm. we keep on adapting to the changes into uh, th th that are coming up in the healthcare sector. Ha have you expanded outside Kenya? Like, have you, have you tried it? outside Kenya, probably in the neighboring countries or somewhere else? Okay, so far not yet, but uh, we have done some, some integrations to some clients in Tanzania, but not the whole, uh, the whole software to them. And uh, yeah, our, our key focus is first of all to, to, to make sure the Kenyan market gets the right, uh, the, we, we, we basically get the, 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 the grisp, good grip uh, of the Kenyan market, then you can now focus on moving to other East African countries. And I think just to add on it, when we started, I think like, uh, okay, our first year was quite tough because also in healthcare, we were not quite conversant with the developing software for the healthcare market. 
But now over the years, so like I can say like the first three years, our main market was in Nairobi. But right now in Kenya, you are going to Nakuru, Nanyuki, Kisumu, Bungoma, Kilifi. So at least uh, after we have managed to capture that good, you know, get a good market share in Kenya, it will be easier for us now when we expand to other markets because also we have learned from the different market dynamics. Let's say clients in Nairobi have different you know, requirements from, let's say clients in Nanyuki or Nakuru. Yeah. Mm. The government has been um, quite, has been, for lack of a better word, has been making noise or rather has been big actually that's the word i should use has been big on digital expansion and moving to the digital space is that an avenue you look forward to probably pursuing if you've not yet started probably selling the idea to the government to adapt that software okay uh okay for for now what we have been doing uh counties have been uh, we have been uh, looking forward to digitize the Healthcare, since it's a uh, it's a uh, healthcare uh, right now, it's under the counties. Mm. Uh, so uh, we have been applying for tenders to the counties that have basically been able to list the tenders uh, online and on newspapers. We have been applying for those tenders, yeah, and we hope to be able to provide this solution to the counties because uh, yeah, because basically they have that challenge. Yeah. Any other thing you'd want to add? Yeah, uh, maybe on that, uh, in terms of like uh, the counties, we have been able to do some demos to some uh, health, uh, like the Moranga County, we have been able to go there, present, and uh, the challenges that we have had from them, from the, the CEC, from the, from the superintendent, is basically there is a lot of uh, the controls that you have been mentioning about, they are missing. Like drugs, we are not able to tell if uh, counties are buying drugs, but they are not able to tell where did this drug actually go? Were they given to the patient? Were they stolen? Did they expire? So there is that challenge uh, in terms of, uh, especially on the drugs part in the counties. So uh, there is a gap that can be addressed so that patients can be able to be, if counties buy drugs, then they get into the right hands to the patients who deserve them, yes. We have seen, um, once people move digital, a lot of retrenchments happen. Of course, we have seen it in the media spaces and you know, into other spaces. What's the risk of having e care on the employment of physical employees? Uh, okay, I think I can, for that one, I can use an example of, okay, what ourselves we have encountered for the clinics we have installed Okay, I think what it has done, it has just made people more efficient and also it has uh, freed people to do more useful tasks maybe instead of, but uh, in terms of retrenchment in the healthcare sector, okay, I don't really see it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. Uh, mm. It's basically because the numbers for healthcare sector, if they are, you still need nurses mm. for the same, you still need doctors for the same. Uh, in fact, it makes them to be more efficient. Mm. Mm. And uh, one of the key things that it has helped is the medical records people. Because I think their key role should be doing research rather than filling in uh, manual papers. On they, they should be focusing on which, which uh, it's doing research, which, which diseases are becoming more common, uh, which drugs are being becoming more resistant, rather than uh, focusing on inputting mm. what my colleague had mentioned a bit earlier about uh, those uh, those books that MOH requires. So it makes them more efficient. If you're able not to generate from the system their mm. reports, then they'll focus more on doing the research. Mm. Researching on diseases, researching on what or, or, or on their field basically what they are taught to do. Yeah. And also I think we also it being an enabler, I think it provides a work life balance because like there's a clinic which we went to uh, it had two receptionists. They were working from like morning to the night. They get out very tired, but when you look at the work they were really doing, it's mainly just writing, writing, writing. Yeah, so <laughs> it was not exactly what you can call <laughs> productive work. But now once we installed our system, patient registration, patient just registers themselves. So right now it's easy for them. If by five, you're good to go.
Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, where do you see this project in the future? Okay. Uh, for us, our focus is uh, number one is to be to be the the place to be an ecosystem uh, that uh, will make sure everybody gets quality healthcare uh, from the patient to the the doctors make, makes them more efficient and to the whole health facilities. So uh, where we want the app to be is to be an ecosystem that is able to serve all, inst all health institutions uh, with a key focus to the patient and uh, the key with, with the center person being the patient and to grow with technology whereby we have uh, artificial intelligence to assist the doctors to be more efficient, the patient to get more quality care. Uh, like in future we want to have based on your diagnosis, based on the drugs that you have been given, we are able to tell uh, the next time you come, we are able to track your diagnosis vis-a-vis -vis the drugs, vis-a-vis -vis how you reacted, such that by the time you come back to the facility, the doctor already has knows like this, this patient doesn't need to be done this, because already based on the history, the system is able to alert them. So we want it to be more uh, to be a, a system whereby it is able to assist in clinical diagnosis with time. So that is the future that we are looking forward to. And mm -hmm. also to add on it, uh, like the Uzima Health I was telling you about, mm -hmm. we also want to be part of that AI revolution in healthcare such that you see like if there's an outbreak of a new disease, uh, it's easy to know. Like the government just is easy to able to map uh, a pattern it's able to easily identify this a pattern here before it blows out, let's say, into a pandemic. And also from our website, uh, you'll see we want to actualize to become the number one health tech provider in East Africa and later Africa. And possibly now we'll be able to go to other markets. Also, uh, something else which we are doing, actually one of the first products, we're also in the kitchen in the terms of uh, patients. Actually, like if you visit Metropolitan Hospital, I think it's one of the, okay, it's the only hospital I've encountered in Kenya whereby patient meal orders are being taken by a tablet. It was, was actually one of our first products. So we want to see, like, to be in health, when you say the ecosystem, we want to really empower the ecosystem in every aspect of healthcare. As we bring this conversation to a close, where do you now, as individuals, see yourself in the future? Don't know where to start. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we want to be the Bill Gates in the healthcare sector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think for me, yeah, it's just the same thing. Bill Gates also my mentor. Yeah, so that's where we see ourselves. And yeah, maybe the company to be in the leagues of Safari come someday. Yeah, for us basically, the company is our is us <laughs> basically. Yeah. Do you have any final remarks? Yeah, mine is a uh, is uh, a drive to the players in the healthcare sector. Is a uh, is people to to come together and share ideas on how we can make healthcare great in Kenya and uh, globally. Yeah, I think for me it's just uh, to say thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> I think, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for making time, for yeah. coming, sharing insights with us about eCare. Mm. No, not all of us, not a lot of people knew about it. I actually knew about it when I saw it online. And I was like, oh wow, there's such an app. Must be nice. No, queuing, it's not funny. There's a time I went to Coptic. Mm -hmm. You have to run around, keep running, you're going, the reception is somewhere else, maybe the consultant you're seeing is on the third floor, the lab is on first floor, the finance is down there, pharmacist is, the, you know, you, it's, it becomes really quite something. But now you see with such apps, it makes life a bit easier. Thank you so much for sharing with us. That was, well, those were the directors of 
um, Cresswave Limited, which is an innovation software company. And they have been sharing insights on eCare, which is a software that is used to register, do a bit of everything in the healthcare management.